Machine learning is a trending topic in data analysis. In this video, I'll walk you through one way in which machine learning can provide value in the healthcare vertical. Measurements of cells from breast cancer tumor biopsies will be used to create a machine learning model that can provide valuable insights into the diagnosis of cancer. All you need to replicate everything in this demo is a copy of Excel 2013 and an account for Azure, which gives you access to the new Microsoft machine learning tool, Azure ML. Let's start by reviewing a high-level summary of the diagnostic process for cancer from a biopsy. When breast cancer is suspected, a biopsy is taken. Measurements and observations are recorded from that biopsy, which becomes a part of reports and historical data. Physicians can then evaluate this information as part of their evaluation of the patient case, which relies on their intuition in comparison to diagnostic standards. The biopsy results can be part of the criteria that they use to make a diagnosis. The process becomes part of the historical record and experience gained can be used to improve intuition and can contribute to the refinement of standards. The improved intuition and standards can make the whole process more effective. So where does machine learning fit in? Intuition and standards based upon biopsy data can be used to create a machine learning model that is trained using historical data. The machine learning model is an attempt to capture the process by which intuition and standards determine a diagnosis and can be used as a diagnostic aid for new biopsies with data. The machine learning model output can also be used to validate the intuition and standards that have been built into the model, and refinements can be made to improve the overall process. I'll reference back to this chart as I walk through the demo. First, let's review the data used in this demo. It is the results of real breast cancer biopsies that was released to the public via the University of Wisconsin. There are over 500 biopsies in the data set, and we will use 10 measurements from the data set for the machine learning model. I've provided a citation for the data on this slide. You can access the data for your own use at the University of California, Irvine Machine Learning Repository. More information about the data is available at this site, including links to publications that reference the data. On this tab, you can see the data as it appears in the source, which is in a flat file type format. Here in Excel 2013, I've imported and formatted the data from the UCI repository. After modeling the data, we can analyze it with a dashboard built in Excel. This tab analyzes one measurement, radius. On the top graph, orange bars are a count of malignant, or cancerous biopsies. The blue bars are benign, or non-cancerous biopsies. You can see that as the radius goes up, the likelihood of malignancy also goes up. The lift chart on the bottom right affirms this observation. The further apart the two lines are, the greater the ability for radius to predict malignancy as it increases in value. You can see that a similar relationship exists for the measurement texture on this tab, and a similar situation also exists for the measurement perimeter. Let's look at radius and texture on a modern Excel scatter chart. With texture on the y-axis and radius on the x-axis, you can see that there is a greater likelihood of malignancy as both values increase. The blue colored biopsies are benign and the red colored biopsies are malignant. There's this middle region with quite a bit of overlap. Let's add perimeter to the play axis. By hitting play, you can see that that middle area exists within the relationships between all three measurements. So we have 10 measurements that we're looking at. How can we possibly evaluate whether measurements from an individual biopsy are malignant? With traditional business intelligence and data analysis tools, such a determination would be very difficult, if not impossible. Here's where the use for machine learning comes into play. Moving down to the last Excel tab, I've organized a pivot table to contain each biopsy number on a single line, with the diagnosis, the 10 measurements, and a binary representation of the diagnosis. On the diagnostic flowchart, we are now creating a model based on intuition and existing data. Here in Azure, I've uploaded the data from that pivot chart and built an Azure ML experiment with it. This is a very simple, basic experiment that uses a two-class logistic regression with the 10 measurements in order to predict malignancy. The tested output of the resulting trained model can then be exported to Excel to determine the accuracy of the predictions. Moving back to the flowchart, we will now validate the results of our Azure machine learning model. Back in Excel, we've imported the test results of the trained Azure ML model. Rows of biopsy data that were not used to build the model 
will run against it to test for accuracy. You can see the distribution charts for the 10 measurements on the right hand side. The lower pivot table contains the scored results of the tested Azure ML model. I've categorized the results in a way that is similar to signal detection theory. What that means is that correct predictions were either true negative, which means that the model correctly predicted a biopsy to be benign, or true positive, which means that the model correctly predicted a biopsy to be malignant. You can see that the Azure ML model was correct about 93% of the time. The incorrect predictions were either false positive, for which biopsies were incorrectly predicted to be malignant, or false negative, where biopsies were incorrectly predicted to be benign. This is probably the worst scenario, because cancerous biopsies were predicted to be non-cancerous. Using modern Excel, we can look at the biopsies that were false negatives and do an analysis to find out why the prediction was wrong. Having selected one of the biopsies that ended up being a false negative, you can first of all see for that row that the confidence of the prediction was 33%. At 50%, it would have predicted that biopsy to be malignant. So it was on the higher end uh, of the uh, negative results. Uh, you can look up here at the measurements of that particular biopsy, and you can see, for example, that the radius was 16.02 and that falls towards the high end of the benign uh, radius values. Texture, 23.24, uh, same scenario there. It's more towards the upper end of the benign uh, range for the, uh, the texture values. And let's just go ahead and move down to the last one, fractal dimension. So for fractal dimension, you can see that it was at 0.057. And looking at 0.057, it's a little bit further to the right but you can also see that there's a uh, less of a trend towards malignancy as you move uh, up in the value of fractal dimension. So let's look at that particular measurement once more and take a look at the lift chart. And on the bottom right, you can see that those lines are actually a little bit closer to one another, which indicates that uh, there maybe isn't such a strong relationship for uh, increasing malignancy with an increasing value of fractal dimension. By analyzing the incorrect predictions, the Azure ML model can be adjusted to make better predictions in the future. The model that I built and that I showed you was very simple, and there are opportunities to try different algorithms, normalize the data, and add other additional steps to make that model better. By doing this, the model can continually improve as part of the intuition standards learning process in an organization. Once an Azure ML trained model is deemed good enough to use in production, it can be modified so that it's production ready and then published as a web service to use with new data. The model can be called using an API, so it's platform neutral. Once you have a trained Azure ML model published as a web service, you can use it in order to make predictions with new data. In this example, the model is used to evaluate single rows of new biopsy data right in Excel. So I basically built an app right in Excel. A prediction of benign or malignant can be made for new rows of data. Right now we're looking at the averages for all three new rows of data. If we were to select the first option, you'll see that the Excel app actually passes an API call to the web service Azure ML model. Uh, we can also get that prediction for the next uh, row of biopsy data uh, or the final row of biopsy data and you can see that it brings in the 10 measurements that we're evaluating along with the diagnosis prediction and also the scored probability of how confident that machine learning model is uh, in that particular prediction. So I can quickly show you how this app works in Excel. Uh, basically, it's just using some logic within Excel to call the Azure model and to feed these values to that model in order to get the prediction on new data. So for example, if the texture instead of being 25 were 28, you'll then see that the output will change along with the scored labels and the scored probability. And by changing that value, it will receive from Azure a new diagnosis of malignant because the scored probability was over 50%. In a production setting, professionals could evaluate biopsy data using this Excel app or something similar to it as a diagnostic aid to help them evaluate new results. I'll publish a blog article at the GeneCroup blog 
that details how you can build an app like this for yourself. It's basically just using modern Excel with a DLL plugin from CodePlex that allows you to make that API call straight from a sheet uh, right in Excel. This method of using Azure ML as a machine learning service to make predictions on new data can be applied to countless scenarios in a healthcare setting. Azure ML models are easy to build and you can start learning to build your own Azure ML models without having to write code. Imagine using this technology to predict diagnosis based upon lab data to evaluate hospital readmission risk or to predict the likelihood of complications. Please reach out to us if you have any additional questions or if you would like a deeper dive into this technology. You can contact me via Twitter or LinkedIn or you can contact GNET Group at Twitter or through their website. We will also publish a post about this video containing some reference links that will help you build a similar machine learning uh, app for yourself uh, at the GNET Group blog.